Hi, this is Jacob Martinez from the actmatrix.com and actnaturally.net. I'm going to go through a few different things that you can do with clients using the SV version of the Act Matrix. This is a modified version of the matrix that I created and have been using for the past few years. The S stands for survival and the V stands for vital. I've got another video and some posts on my websites explaining the rationale of why I altered the matrix in this way. And if you're not familiar with the SV matrix, matrix, you can go there and check those out if you have questions. The first thing you can do with the SV matrix is you can easily explore evolutionary function with clients. The SV matrix is designed to take evolutionary history into account when discussing our behavior and experiences. By setting up a system of survival and vital, we can explore how various behaviors and experiences contribute to our survival, as well as help us live a vital life. We can also explore how some of our experiences used to function for our, our ancestors and how they evolved in the first place. All of these common psychological concerns have evolutionary roots. And at the end of the day, they are all related to survival in some way. Using the matrix, we can draw loops between the inner experience of these common issues and how they manifest on the outside in terms of overt behaviors. We can also use the SV matrix to help talk about how all of our emotional and cognitive experiences are rooted in helping us survive as a species. By putting these experiences into evolutionary context, we help normalize them for our clients and begin to transform the functions they have. We can do this for any behavior. And we don't want to forget that not only do the experiences we have help us survive as a species, they also help make our lives full, meaningful, and vital. A vital life means having the complete range of human experience, or at least access to the complete range of human experience. The SV matrix helps us non-judgmentally talk about any behavior. Bringing in the evolutionary context is already, in my opinion, inherently non-judgmental. And we can take it further by really highlighting how and why our minds do what they do, and why some behaviors are so hard to change. We also want to emphasize that these actions make sense, given the history of the person. And while they are not the only possible option, many people in their position might do the exact same thing. We can also seamlessly integrate the choice point into the SV matrix. The choice point and the traditional act matrix are hard to use simultaneously because they use the same terminology but mean different things when they say toward and away. So trying to use both with clients can get confusing for the client and the therapist. By using the survival and vital matrix instead of toward and away, we free up the ability to integrate the choice point easily into the matrix. Many survival actions we engage in can be done in ways that move us away from our values and in ways that move us toward our values. On the other end, while most of the actions we engage in that bring us a sense of vitality are inherently toward moves, this isn't always the case. We can engage in vital actions that move us away from our values in certain contexts. So adding on this layer of functional analysis is super helpful. We can transform survival stuff into vital stuff. Many actions we engage in to survive can be transformed into vital experiences. 
Right now, for example, we are both breathing. This helps us survive. But if we take 30 seconds and take our breathing under conscious control and simply allow ourselves to breathe, being in charge of how long each breath takes, how long we hold it into our body, and how long we exhale it, we might notice that the act of breathing itself becomes a vital experience. Why don't we take 30 seconds just to do that? So for the next 30 seconds, simply breathe and attend to your breath and notice that there was a you there in control of your breathing. And if you can imagine a kind of a compass needle in the center point of the matrix, constantly jiggling back and forth the way a compass needle does, uh, certain actions can move the needle toward the survival side or the vital side, even if it's just the slightest move. So breathing that way with intention and purpose, you might have noticed your compass needle start to kind of jiggle there, maybe just slightly turn towards the vital experience of being in contact with the present moment. So we want to help our clients notice those subtle shifts and contact them deliberately. All of our senses have survival functions and all can be transformed in this way. We can help ourselves along here by using prompts like, look at this as if you were a newborn child or listen with a sense of curiosity, or imagine you're an alien smelling this scent for the very first time. So you see any sense that we have can be used uh, in, in using different experiments and we can, we can activate these vital experiences instead of just these survival functions. Our covert behavior can just as easily be transformed in the same way. We can extract values from any action. I come from the school of thought that our values permeate every action we engage in, no matter how small. Therefore, any action can provide information that will help us clarify and identify what deeply matters to us. We can breathe in a way that is meaningless to us, or we can breathe in a way that is meaningful. We can walk in a way that just gets us from point A to point B, or we can walk in a way that adds some sense of vitality to our life. The power is in the ability to choose how we do things. And again, we can use that compass needle metaphor. The needle is constantly moving, never still, always ready to turn as it locks onto something of importance. Using the SV matrix, we can explore any action and try to notice the pull toward vitality that is there. We can practice shifting our attention along the vertical line you can do this in the traditional ACT matrix too, though in the SV matrix, a greater emphasis is placed on the vertical line being where our attention is focused at any given moment. By using this distinction, we can ask questions that draw our client's attention to the external space around us, as well as their internal world. Questions like, what's something in this room that is helpful for survival? And what is something in this room that sparks a sense of vitality can draw a client's attention up and out into the environment? Other questions can help them turn inward with an open and curious stance. Like sand shifting in an hourglass, 
our attention is constantly moving between the external space and the internal world. We can practice things like attending to the external world through our sense of hearing for one minute and then turning our inward attention uh, or turning our attention inward to our mind for one minute. Many different experiments can be done by harnessing the vertical line. You can use imagery to evoke experiences. The SV matrix can be used to add context to imaginal exercises. We might ask our client to imagine themselves in a certain emotional state and then help them observe what is happening in their body as they do this. We can explore things like what their body position would best would be in this experience or what, what body position would best fit this experience and so on. And then we can do the same thing on the vital end of the spectrum as well. We can also ask clients to imagine different scenarios or different experiences and see where that compass needle moves. Do these imaginations evoke survival experiences or vital ones? For example, you can imagine that your cat was here in this room with us right now as you are talking about this. What do you notice? If your dog was here in this room, what would pique his interest first? Notice what shows up for you as you do this. Picture your son there in that chair. Imagine how his face would look, the expression on it. Imagine holding your daughter's hand right now. Any prompts such as these can evoke powerful experiences that can then be used and explored in session. We can collaboratively turn survival moves into vital moves. Actions on the survival end aren't just for survival itself. That's the huge umbrella function. Within that umbrella are core human yearnings. If we can analyze the function of behavior with clients and see what yearning is being met, then we can collaborate with clients to brainstorm alternate actions that meet the same yearning more flexibly. This is much more effective than simply assigning alternate behaviors because they are safer, for example. We want any alternative behavior to have the same function rather than being topographically similar. And we can do easy self as process and self as context work with the SV matrix. By viewing our experience through the lens of this matrix, we can notice the self as an ongoing process in context. Right now, my heart is beating. My lungs are filling with air in and, in and out. My body is digesting and so on. And as that is all happening, my mind is doing its thing, thinking, reasoning, processing, giving me images and ideas and words. And at the same time, I am caring about the people and things in my life that matter so much to me. And I can be doing X, Y, and Z with intention and purpose. Going through the SV matrix in this way helps clients view themselves as an amalgamation of experience and behavior that is constantly moving, never settled, always settled. Those are just the cool things that you can do with the SV matrix that I've thought of so far. If you like this video, uh, share something about this video with a friend, colleague, or online. You can also contact me if you have any questions or want to know more. Thank you very much.